Hey guys, so uh, something's been coming up a lot that I want to talk about, and it has to do with the sanctity of one's home. Um, I recently moved into a new house in Brooklyn, and it's large, and I have roommates. Um, and so at the end of this month, I'm looking for new roommates. I mean, I'm looking now for, uh, for someone to move in um, uh, in a few days, actually. And it's interesting how, you know, you learn a lot about yourself and others in that process, especially living with roommates. Um, for instance, you know, people say one thing and they um, have no intention of being dishonest, but their um, understanding and interpretation of certain things might be very different than yours. For instance, you know, as a religious from deeply spiritual and Kabbalistic woman, I very much believe in um, the sanctity of one's home and privacy and keeping strangers out um, and keeping uh, men out uh, if I'm not if they're not the person I'm married to and so um, you know it's it, it's it's really difficult to discuss this in a public forum like this because it's so um, particular to women and women's um, you know sanctity and safety and and I don't mean physical safety because I'm not worried about harm. I'm worried about spiritual um, safety, in a sense. It's hard to, again, it's very hard to describe. Most people have never thought of these ideas or not in this way. But the idea of spiritual purity and, and not mixing or confusing energies. And so one of the things I've mentioned to all my roommates was that, you know, before they moved in, was that one of my requirements was not having men over. Um, and so at, at a very early point when we had just moved in, one of my roommates asked if her brother-in-law could come by to charge his phone and um, pick up something that she had to give him. <clears throat> and you know, it was very new in our living together and um, I wanted to be helpful, I wanted to be nice, and I wanted to give her what she wanted. And so I said, yes, it's okay. Um, I left the front door open so that there was, it wasn't, that we weren't closed in into a private space um, with a man and, and just single women. And, um, and it's funny because she was, in her mind, she must have thought, oh, it's my brother-in-law. He's married to my sister. There's no possibility of anything. Um, but she's obviously not a man. She doesn't think like a man thinks. And halacha is very particular. And halacha is written by men and uh, very smart ones who've argued and, and debated and studied this and come to these conclusions over thousands of years. And so I have to think they know a little bit more about the way men think than we do. And so if the halacha says that a man can't be alone with single women, there's a reason. Uh, if it's two men, it's fine. If it's two women, it's not. And so to explain that a little bit in more detail, if it's two men, married or single, doesn't matter, and one woman, then yichud is not a problem. It's like the the uh, unity of um, being together is it's okay. It's kosher. If it's one man and two women, it's not okay unless one of the women is, is his wife, because then that's enough supervision. You can trust the man in that sense. And um, and so um, it's really such a compliment to women. You know, it, it's funny on the outside. A lot of people may not understand the deeper implications and reasoning behind these laws and they may jump to the conclusion and say oh this sounds chauvinistic or if it's one man and two women they're obviously not alone so why can't you trust them and the answer is because you can't trust the man because even with two women he may try something and um, and that's the, the reason the rabbis have given and so uh, if it's two men though then one is almost like supervising the other and one wouldn't think to do something unsavory in the presence or with a witness, you know, of this other man there. Um, and so it has nothing negative or disparaging to say about women, only positive. In 1,000 feet, turn left onto Albany Avenue. But instead it says that essentially a man alone can't be trusted. Um, and we've all heard and seen and lived experiences where this is very much the case, um, unfortunately. And so until Mashiach comes. And so anyway, so this whole idea that her brother-in-law Turn left onto Albany Avenue. To charge his phone, et cetera, et cetera. Um, it just felt so weird. It felt so weird to me. And um, 
and it really was uncomfortable and after that I remember thinking you know what next time if anything like this happens I'm gonna not be the nice guy and I'm gonna say no I'm not comfortable um, and sometimes we can't have rational we don't have rational um, explanations or words it's a feeling you know for me to explain how I feel inside and in my heart and my soul and my being to somebody else you know even if I found words it's, it doesn't necessarily mean that they'll understand or that it'll convey what I need to say and want to say. And so as crystal clear as I was about no men, somehow I still found myself in a situation where I, I um, was asked to have a guy over and I said yes and it got weird. And so um, I'm not going to attempt to explain the confusing of energies and the mixing of energies and all this stuff that goes on because I, I don't want it to happen so I don't want to add energy to it and anything a woman says creates. In 600 feet, turn right onto President Street. And so discussing it uh, won't help the situation. And so um, I'll let a man do that whose words do not carry the same force and magnitude as a woman's words. Um, and so it's 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 very interesting to me that it still is an issue you know several people have come and seen the, the house and the, the available space and said it's amazing I love it it's beautiful but are you turn right on the president street and the answer is no I'm not and, and I, I really you know hope and pray my wish is that people specifically women understand and, and wake up in 800 to me, feet turn right onto Kingston Avenue wake up to the tremendous power that they hold and the tremendous forces at play and that words and, and movements and everything turn right onto Kingston Avenue then your destination will be on the left wields tremendous force and uh, that we need to be really mindful careful thoughtful of what we do with our words our actions our bodies our presence merely being in the presence of another is a tremendous sanctity and, and it's, it's all but lost on our modern society. And I, I, I wish I didn't even need to say those words. I wish there was a man out there saying this and, and that, and I'm sure there are, it's, you know, um, I don't need to say, I wish there are men saying out, out, the, out there saying this because there are rabbis teaching halacha and, and teaching about yichud. Um, but for some reason, it seems to be very um, ill understood and especially amongst um, single women who are above you know 18 19 um, who have been single and dating for a long time in the firm world um, somehow they think that that's a halacha that doesn't really make a difference it doesn't really do anything and I think it really contributes tremendously to the shidduch crisis so in any case those are my thoughts um, your destination is on the left